Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up on iPad Today, the Daily is here, but will you want to read it? Daily? Plus, Honeycomb is coming for Apple, and this time, it's personal. Plus, Oscar Buzz hits the iPad App Store. Kind of weird. You might like it, though. And M.G. Siegler from TechCrunch joins me on this episode of iPad Today. This episode of iPad Today is brought to you by Slingbox, where you can turn your iPad into a television. With the new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at slingbox.com slash twit. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com bonus code iPad. Oh, hello. Welcome to another exciting edition of iPad Today. This is episode 31. Now, many of you may already know that Leo is on vacation this week. He is currently in Buenos Aires eating a lot of steak and hopefully drinking a lot of red vino. But uh, it's not just me today because uh, M.G. Siegler of TechCrunch, star writer of TechCrunch, has graciously agreed to fill in as my co-host today. Hello, M.G. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me here. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, some of you may know that uh, MG is not only a great writer for TechCrunch, but he's also my boyfriend, so we'll just get that out of the way. We know each other. That's sort of awkward. Yeah, well, it's not awkward. It's just, it's full that disclosure. Makes me feel very awkward. Anybody who follows us on Twitter, Tumblr, looks at our Flickr pictures, would know this anyway. So We're not I'm officially just, connected on uh, Facebook, though, actually. Yes, we are. Uh -huh. What do you mean? We're, we're not connected on Facebook. We're friends, but we're not in a relationship. Oh, yeah, well, it 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 uh, makes for a less awkward breakup later. <laughs> it's just you know, I yeah, mean, it's true. it's foresight, right? Yeah. Anyway, so we know each other very well, and I thought that uh, not only am I a great fan of his work, but we're also both iPad owners, and we talk about our favorite apps all the time, and it's good stuff. So it's really fun to be able to have you here today, and uh, it's fun. Mm -hmm. You're no, you're no Leo, but you'll do. Right. You'll do. Not as lively. Uh, so anyway, this is, of course, is the show where we talk about iPads, but not just about iPads, about the apps that are new and the, the news that's out. And there's, it, you know, the iPad fever has reached a bit of a frenzy, uh, certainly over the last couple of months. iPad 2, everyone's speculating. People claim to be seeing it out, uh, you know, in, on the street practically. So we'll get to some of that in a minute. But as everybody who watches the show regularly knows, we usually start with a theme of some kind. Because often there are a lot of apps that do similar things, but they each do, they've got unique qualities to them. So we thought a lot about what this theme was going to be today. And I was thinking, gosh, are we running out of themes? We've done a lot of photography. We've, you know, we get uh, requests for school education apps. We've done some of that. We try to pick a new interesting theme that, that gives something to you guys without feeling like we're being just too repetitive. And then MG actually said... Hey, have you done uh, messaging apps? Yeah. You know, like pretty, ways to basically, a ton of them right now. basically text with somebody, but yeah. without using a texting protocol. Right. I mean, some people. Right. Texting is a ripoff, so why do you do that? And then, I mean, you can't do it anyway over the iPad. On the iPad, iPad so, yeah. yeah. Before we even get into, I mean, is texting a dying model? I mean, texting. No, it's like an exploding model. It's like what every single person under 18 or whatever, that's all, that's how they communicate with one another. Well, but I mean, don't you think that. If there are apps or other ways to circumvent texting that just use a data plan, let's say you have an unlimited data plan, but you're also right. paying thirty dollars a month for a texting plan. Yeah. If you can just get all your friends to use the yeah, same the, app, the then you wouldn't actually is, need to text. You know, interoperability, of course. You know, texting works across all different devices. You know, both smartphones and you know the crappy uh, old school phones. So that's that's part of the reason. But you know, if eventually one of these apps does take off and it's across both not only the iPhone, Android devices, and all those, then yeah, maybe you know something. Text Plus, which we'll talk about, or some of the other ones could potentially take off, but it's still way too, you know, there's way too much interoperability problems with, with any of these replacing text messaging. Right. So text messaging is here to stay at least, uh, at least in the foreseeable long term. But in the meantime, uh, a service that you and I have used a lot, in fact, 
we use this service more than we text each other yeah. for no really good reason well, besides we like it. And part of the reason is because we have, like, I always have multiple devices that I'm che checking out. So I either have an Android device or a new iPhone or something. And so it's really easy to switch between these if we just use an app rather than a text Right, because number. it's not connected to a certain phone number. Right. Uh, first app is called Beluga. If you're not familiar with Beluga, Beluga uh, is, a, is a, a kind of white whale. That's what uh, Beluga refers to. That's right. That's what they're... A little cute whale. They're a little cute whale. If you, you go beluga, what in, the, what in the heck is that word? That's, that's what it uh, refers to. So beluga is, it's basically a, a group messaging system right. where you and I can message between each other. Right, you can do it one-on-one -on -one or you can do it one-to-many and many people can then get involved. Like you should have the wino wagon up, up there. The wino wagon's a good example <laughs> of a group pod, but yeah. Beluga arranges everything into pods. You can create a pod and then you can invite everybody based on either their phone number or their email, email address. Email address, yeah. So Or if they're already a member of Or if they're already Beluga. a member you can yeah. you can they can add them easily. You can you can add them or if they're in your contact list. So this was actually Wino Wagon refers to a pod that had a bunch of people involved because uh, we had gone on a Napa tour and so we Got a limo and called ourselves the Wino Wagon. Had a lot of fun. So everybody was texting back and forth. Eileen and I, um, this is a good example of something that Beluga does well is you can attach pictures. You take yeah. a picture and then you add it into your message. So this is something that when we were at CES, Eileen had been at CES before me, took a picture of this uh, blood pressure monitor app and was just kind of like, hey, if I forget to tell you later, this is something that you right. definitely it's need really to check out It's really quick to be able floor. to send a picture that way. I right. Mean, so, and people go, well, no, wait a second. So texting allow you can you can text out to a group. Right. You can attach a picture to a group, but there's something missing. Uh, Beluga. There's well, one of the cool things definitely missing is if you click on the uh, the map version, you know, so oh, you can see where point. people actually are. Um, yeah, hit that. So th one of the texts then came from uh, right there, uh, up up near where we are now, and one mm -hmm. came from in the city. Right. And it's cool when you see them all over, all across the world, really. When uh, depending on who's in your group, it's also good if you, for whatever reason, are trying to keep track of somebody. There have right. been a couple times. In fact, Beluga. It seems like they're still trying to make sure that this feature works are you well. Because talk about when you thought I stole your cats and took yeah. Them well, to there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a certain situation where MG had messaged me and had attached a picture of one of my cats because I was out of town and. I looked on the map and said, why does it say that you and my cats are in on Hate Street? Well, we were strolling around looking for something to eat. <laughs> so it's, it's sort of, it's, the functionality is maybe a little bit wonky, but that is very nice, especially when you're in a big group, because you can be, yeah. anybody that you could have introduced to a pod could be anywhere in the world. Right. And it's a fun little, yeah, the map view is fun. So for example, everybody on the wino wagon. So somebody's uh, apparently in uh, the Italian Riviera right It looks now. like it, yeah. <laughs> that was once. I that wasn't obviously while we were all on that wagon, but no, you know, no, no, no. And now they can keep texting because the groups remain intact, which right. is nice too. Yeah. Um, and also one of the things I really like about it is that not only does it work on iPhone slash iPad, uh, there's also, of course, Android, and then it also works on the web. It has a pretty good web interface. So sometimes I text you from the web Do you? when it comes to your Blue I've never actually thing. done that before. Yeah, it's good. It looks exactly like that. See, this is, to me, this is... Uh, replaces text completely. Yeah. If for some reason I could just convince the people that I, I don't text with everybody that I might talk to on the phone, the right. people that I text with to use this, I could get rid of my texting plan and I don't think I would suffer. The one concern, of course, is what if they go down? You know, right. like texting can go down, of course, you know, if a carrier goes down, but it usually doesn't go down or there's some workaround or you can use it, you know, something else. This, if it goes down, this is a service, you know, right. centralized service. So that's a little bit of a problem. But you know, the team behind it um, seems very good. They're all ex-Googlers. Um, you know, I'm sure they're going to get some some nice funding soon. Right. You know, so it's a good app. The only other issue, of course, with Beluga is that if you were to, um, so this is me, uh, of course, it, this doesn't want to rotate when I'm adding a new pod, but if I was to make a new pod and add a bunch of people to the pod, and then maybe later along the line, I've decided to add that fifth friend that Maybe something right. had been said about that friend right. earlier on. I've run into this. You have before. to, yeah. It's yeah. it's kind of tricky, you know. Right. Not that anybody's you because know being they'll be able to see purpose, everything. The history of the pod. Yeah, maybe so, that should be an option at some point. Like, don't let this person see, you know, what's been said. That would before. be nice. Yeah, it's kind of like when you jump into an IRC chat. You know, you don't see what happened, right. what was said before you got in there. Right. So that's so just something to consider with a lot of these messaging services, not just Beluga. The next messaging service uh, that you uh, recommended to me because it is optimized for the iPad, which mm -hmm. uh, Beluga isn't, it works right. okay, and it's mostly text-based, so I always figure 
even though there are pictures involved, for the most part, text-based stuff, right. as long as you can blow it up, is fine. I don't want to launch IMO.IM because the last time we'll I- We'll try it. Try it. We'll see if it Okay, it, we'll it see if it, if it does the same thing again. So IMO, we're going to, Jan Ruby, I don't want to stay on this too long because these are my AIM contacts and I don't want to give away all of their, uh, their screen names yeah. because- They've got privacy. But what happened when I downloaded IMO earlier, what, basically what this is, is it's, it's an AIM uh, client or an ICQ client or a Yahoo chat client. It's an IM client that handles a lot of different I, um, you know, IM services. Yeah. So it's like, you know, trillion. What I used to use Windows was right. what I used. But it's very it simple. It handled everything. Very simple. It is a good iPad interface. Uh, you know, I reviewed it for TechCrunch a couple of weeks ago, but I actually just looked at the web interface, which they had revamped. Mm -hmm. Um and, you know, I like how, how simple it was. Uh, you know, some people have other preferences for what they, you know, what they use. Some people use Mebo for, Mebo has a pretty good, you know, uh, iPhone app, but they don't right. have a, an iPad app yet. But, um, so yeah, it's that, that's all it is. I think for a lot of folks. Uh, uh, and it didn't uh, auto tweet out. No, it didn't. Nothing, so, so what we're referencing is earlier when I had just downloaded IMO and I put in my, my AIM credentials, because that's where my uh, IM originates from right it tweeted out without me saying anything i think it was like imo.im ipad.imo.im which looks like spam or something right, weird right. and i quickly deleted the tweet maybe if you were really quick you would have seen the 10 seconds that it was live didn't look like it did that again so that's good so i don't know maybe just sort of a weird i had the same first... problem but my i think mine was related to uh the aol live stream thing where i had it for some reason i had it set up when i changed the status message to auto tweet so i think that's what the problem was i just said like trying out you know imo it, it's possible that the, yeah there's some sneaky thing in settings that you would never know until yeah. it's too late so. uh mg mentioned live stream uh live stream is it's aol's ipad really foray into right. just using aim but right. then it also gives you other things for example anybody that you're following on twitter now can be accessed through live stream it's kind of like an all-in-one i am client plus uh four square check-ins uh twitter uh messages right. i don't really use it i mean aol's now owns TechCrunch, of course so i am uh you're not required to use other <laughs> I'm AOL not required products. to use that <laughs> well, but, that's and nice. i don't use that but, yeah. uh i don't i don't have a problem with live stream when i first got the ipad of course i thought oh i am i'd like to experiment with whatever's best right and i downloaded live stream and that was it was kind of my only best option for about a week and then uh the app store just flooded with other im clients so right. it's one of many uh, but it's certainly an option, and I don't know, if you're like a diehard AOL fan, that might be the best option for you. But, you know, with all of these services now, I don't care who originated their uh, messaging, uh, who, who, who who the originating messaging service was because it doesn't matter right. anymore. Adium I use um, with OS 10, it's for everybody. Yeah. It, you know, G Talk, it all. It's but all yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, like, you know, Beluga is obviously totally separate from what this IMO.IM is because that's, you know, based around chat. Mm -hmm. And this, you know, Beluga is a whole new messaging layer that's kind of, you know, it's something that conceivably be integrated into IMO.IM, but is not right. it's totally separate from what, it's what texting. they're trying to do. Yeah. I see Beluga as texting, yeah. which is different than I am. Right. You know, and then there's the and then there's the whole camp of people who don't even use IM at all and never really have and don't like to be reachable and turn off their G talk. I don't understand those people. I am is my favorite and way to connect. And then there's the but then there's the way that uh, Facebook is doing now, which is, of course, like merging IM with messages and with texting as well. Like right. that's what they're doing with their new Facebook messages product. So yeah. they're all converging. And yeah, it's all it's all the uh, the short messages is the ruler. Now, Text Plus, I know that I had played around with Text Plus on my iPhone. I don't know. I mean, a couple of years ago. It's been I around think. for it's a long time. It's been around time. for a while. And it's really popular. It has millions of users. Millions of users. And the whole idea is, is that you are it's it's texting but it's circumventing it's not using your texting data no it's it's pretty much straight up a way to replace texting with an app i mean it is texting you know very very basic though you can do grouping and things like that but it's basically a way to get around having to pay to text people right so uh, obviously that sounds good to folks the interface, uh, as you can see, I mean, this is a free version. I believe they have a paid for version yep. where they would strip out I think the they have ad. Like three different versions. Yeah, it's kind of confusing. It's a little confusing. I noticed that too in the app store. So this is, well, it's a picture of a football player. It's not going to ruin my day, but if if it would ruin yours, then then you do have a pro option. So I w I've got a conversation here that's live with MG, and we're actually going through 
phone numbers that Text Plus assigns to us, and I'm not sure where those numbers are coming from. It's right. almost like a Google Voice type of a situation. Yeah, that's a little confusing. Um, the grouping of people, in my opinion, is a little bit more confusing than it is on something like Beluga, but um, also they have great uh, generic avatars. That's the one I actually use for everything. My, uh, this one? Yeah, my nice little. It's very nice. Yeah. It's a brown-haired guy, so yeah. without glasses. It yep. doesn't really look like you. Yeah, I just that's how I like that. And uh, I have had some folks uh, that I don't know be able to reach me on Text Plus. So maybe there's some sort of uh, privacy feature that I haven't figured out yet because I saw that once and went, ooh, Text Plus is kind of weird. Uh, you've got a variety of account settings. You can obviously fill out a profile. You can share with your friends. I mean, all of the find your Twitter friends and add them on Text Plus. It works the way that, that many of these other services work. I have the same problem you do where... There is nothing wrong with the interface, but it is kind of messy. It's a little bit convoluted. One other thing that they do that's interesting is that they actually integrate with texting. So, like, you don't have to use an app. You can use just text, straight up text messaging to be able to communicate with other people in your text plus group, which is nice. But it's also weird because it comes from a different number. That's that's what you were confused about a little bit. You know, what's this other number? Yeah. So if you were to text someone else, it would come from this other number. Uh, you know, you might not know who it is necessarily, it'll say, but... It also, I, I was going to show you, but it's worth noting that Textbus did crash a couple times during our conversation, but what it will do is say, hey, uh, let's pick a number for you. Uh, where? What's your uh, local area code? Right. So I said 415, and so it said, well, here's some numbers that are available, so I just picked the first one and right. said, okay, that'll be a dollar ninety nine. Here's a free number that you could choose. It's like 601, I don't know where that is. <laughs> right, so I right. said, okay, I'll just choose the free one. It's kind of the same thing I did with my Google Voice number, so... Uh, from the three, it seems like you've got a variety of options. You've got Beluga that is a great texting alternative, yeah. but works the same way. It's visually very nice. It's free. Uh, IMO.IM, which is take your IM, IM with you right. uh, on your iPad. If you're a big IMer, I mean, I am. <laughs> I am a big IMer. I am, so that's a good one. Right. Uh, also free. And then Text Plus is a more robust option. Can be free. Can be free yeah. if you don't mind an ad in the lower left. Yeah. Uh, has a lot of features and maybe a little much for some and folks. And Text Plus is interesting because that's a space that's really blowing up right now. There's a lot of other players in this. One of them, you know, that launched actually uh, as a side of uh, TechCrunch Disrupt when we were doing the hackathon is GroupMe, which is mm -hmm. also growing very quickly now. They just raised a kind of a big round of funding for it. It's just another group way to group uh, group text message people. You know, I used it when I went to uh, when I went to Las Vegas with some friends recently, mm -hmm. and we were all just texting each other there. They have an app, and it's it's okay. Um, the problem, is, you know, there's there's a few issues with with actually using it. That's the only way you can send pictures and stuff. But most people, it seems like at least the way we were using it was just using text messaging. So we were just using our text messaging client and using that as kind of like the router to go between everyone else who is using it. Why not use Beluga then? Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know that we had known. Of, yeah, we didn't know about Beluga at the time. So that's oh, okay. why we were using this that. This pre-Beluga days. Yeah. But they both, you know, it has advantages and disadvantages. It does it straight up through text versus right. Beluga, which you have to use the app for. So, you know, there's pluses and minuses. Sure. Sometimes texting will go, uh, text will go through when I can't get service. Right, right. You know, and vice versa. So I guess it's good not to completely do away with any of them. Although I sure would like to get rid of my texting plan. Yes. Although there are going to be a lot of plan options uh, in the next couple of weeks. So those are our messaging apps for our messaging theme of the day. And thank you, MG, for suggesting the theme. It was a very good one. Yes. You bet. Big, big messenger here. So. If you're a messenger, definitely check those out and group me as well. And there are other options too, but it's only an hour long show. If you want the links to any of the apps that we mentioned, uh, you haven't written them down or anything like that, don't worry about it. Just go to twit.tv slash IPT. That's also where you can watch past episodes if you missed one. By the way, I noticed uh, I there was a certain point in our email uh, box that I, for some reason, had missed. And I noticed that a lot of you had complained that there was an audio feed in our video feeds in iTunes for episode 29. If that's still a problem, please let me know, but I think we fixed it. Uh, sorry about that. And if you want to subscribe, speaking of iTunes, to the show, uh, twit.tv slash IPT is where you do that as well. Subscription is free. So if you're like, I don't know, subscription, I don't know how that works. It's so easy and it's the best way to, really to watch the show on your iPad. If you want to watch live, of course, our iPad app is what we recommend and you can chat as well. It's a lot of fun. Otherwise, uh, subscribe in iTunes and watch it later because we'll have uh, some visuals and URLs that we don't add into the live show, which is very helpful. 
However, if you are watching live, you already know this, but if you're not, a uh, reminder that we record iPad Today live on Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, just like right now or previously if you're watching this anytime besides live. And if you have app ideas of your own and you guys send really good ideas and we really appreciate them and we use them as much as possible, shoot us an email at iPadToday at twit.tv. And we can't respond to everybody, but I assure you that somebody reads every email. So thanks for that. Uh, what's been going on in the world of iPad? Nothing, really. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's so actually no been news. a really big week. Yes. The Daily came out. Yes. Finally, uh, the Daily was... When did we first hear about this partnership? I mean, this a was few a few months ago. A few months ago yes. was Rupert Murdoch was going to put together some sort of new daily newspaper that was going to have a subscription model right. that was... Revolutionary. Even, revolutionary. Uh, nobody else was, was going to do it. There was actually a partnership with Apple, and they had figured it all out. Right. And then they were going to have uh, an event here, or here uh, about an hour south of us in San Francisco with Steve Jobs and Rupert Murdoch. That right. Was, that was the rumor of it, of course. Then, you know, a lot has happened since then. Steve Jobs is now on medical leave. Right. And so they... They also supposedly had some, you know, problems getting the uh, the subscription thing built into iTunes, so they pushed things back a little bit. But now this week, we finally got it. Right. So the daily launched uh, yesterday, and it's pretty cool. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's pretty cool. If you if you haven't downloaded it yet, this is the time to do it because you're going to get a couple weeks for free. Uh, the uh, the weekly subscription is ninety nine cents. cents. And then, so uh, you go, wow, a dollar per week, that's not bad. Or $40 for year. the year. Yeah. yeah. And it, I think it turns into like four, 14 cents per episode yeah. if you were going to per issue. think of it yeah, that yeah. way, per right. issue. So what we're looking at is today's issue of the daily. Okay. So uh, we'll go just to the, to the home. This is basically your, your front page. So what's, what's on the front page, if it were to be a magazine, is The Big Dig, which is, uh, referring to the snowstorm in the Midwest Northeast. And what you can do is is sc scroll through, you know, very cover flow-esque. One of the nice touches is I scrolled through all the way and thought, is it going to end at one point? No, it's actually a nice big little carousel, carousel circle. Yeah. So that's cool. Uh, but if you just go, if we just go back to the table of contents, it gives you an idea of how the daily really is very much more like a magazine slash newspaper, a periodical than any website, website yeah. equivalent to it would have been. So we've got our stories. It tells you, it's got a, kind of a nice little handy, here are the tips for navigation around the daily. Yeah, one question is, will they always have to have that? You know, is, is this something that becomes like a standard, you know, a way to view these apps or whatever? Are they always going to have these silly little, you know, how, reminders? How, how, how to how navigate to? around this app? Yeah. Oh, I think it'll be there for a while. It's like a newspaper. You don't need any how-tos, you know, you... You just flip a page. Yeah, you go from page to page. Well... The reason that I think the Daily needs this is, so let's go into well, our, our cover story yeah. here, is, okay, so we're looking at a picture and we go, okay, well, what do we do now? You know, right. all, all of the, you know, the Wired magazine kind of has the same issue where you scroll sometimes right. sideways and it's an ad. Sometimes it's down, down and, yep. and it's the rest of the article. Right. Sometimes you tap on it and sometimes video plays, who, who knows? Right, what's you know, there's, there's no standard. So here on this app, it says turn to see story and it's got to tell me that or I wouldn't know. Okay, well, now at this point, I've got to turn the iPad to actually right. read the story. That's that's their standard thing, it seems like, for the past couple of days that I've checked it out. It's like, if you're viewing it in portrait mode, you'll get the story. If you're viewing it in landscape mode, you'll get pictures of it. Right. Now, this, it looks great, right? Now, what's nice about the daily is, is that you go, okay, well, all right, am I wowed yet? Um, it has a lot of stuff that some of the other magazines are experimenting with, such as video. So this is actually, uh, you know, a movie that they've embedded within the app. Mm -hmm. They have that for audio, too. They also have a very curious feature that no one ever has ever done before. This video looks pretty good. Um, it's artifacty. They may downscale it or upscale it, depending on what the connection is. I'm not sure. Right. So you get an idea. I mean, it's for if you're just, you know, it's it's uh, it gives you a little something extra. Right. Here's um here's a weird feature. So. On this little arrow button, it gives me an opportunity to share links out to Twitter and Facebook or email the story to somebody. And you go, okay, well, how does that work? Because if you don't have the app installed, 
how are you going to be able to read these articles that, I mean, right. they're, they're, they're uh, unique to the daily. They're not anywhere else online. The daily right. doesn't iPad have a website. Only. Right. So what they pretty much give you is it's sort of a permalink to an image yeah, that shows a, the page. It's a website that holds an image where you can read that story on the web if someone were to share this link. However, what they're missing is hyperlinks. Right. I mean, not only if I shared the story of the snow with you, you just you read the story and that's about it. Right. And you could email me back and say thank you. But the story itself from within the app, there are no, I mean, think of all the, the link references that right. are missed because it's a very closed down. It's, 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 it's like an old fashioned newspaper. Yeah, that this is what, what you get is what you it's see. It's probably, you know, it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg problem, I guess, because, you know, the, the idea is that they want to keep this inside, you know, it's built totally around the iPad. And so, you know, they could link out to other things, but then they would have to open a browser, of course, when they do link out to other things. And then if people want to link into it, you know, how do you do that exactly? Well, you do it this way. You know, maybe the hope is that eventually there will be a lot of kind of periodicals and stuff that are built in this manner, and maybe they can interlink between one another. But right, right now, that's just not the case, since this is the only one. Another uh, sort of curious uh, part of the functionality is the ability to read later. Now, when when I hear read later, I think, oh, something like Instapaper. Right. I do that with articles all the time. The Daily has that built into its infrastructure here. It's this little uh, paperclip. paperclip. If I click on this paperclip then it'll allow me to read this article later from within the daily app itself. Right. So it's not actually anything that's super helpful for me because I read a lot of things later. So all my daily read laters are different than the rest of my read laters right. that I use a variety of apps for, you know, or my RSS readers. Um, a lot of folks have complained about the content itself of the daily, which that is... I think that that uh, it, it's just going to kind of depend on what kind of news you like. Well, to they're, they're spending a lot of money, you know, millions of dollars. They've hired an entire editorial staff just for this project. And they have like, you know, they have a, a wing of the, the headquarters in New York that they, they work out of. And so they're just working on this thing. And, you know, one of the things the potentially interesting things is that they do update it throughout the day. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of scattered how they update it or when they update it. And, you know, we saw that in full effect yesterday with the Egypt news. You know, things are happening in real time, but this isn't so real time. Yeah, in fact, uh, I I had complained about that yesterday because I had downloaded the daily. I went to the gym. I read the whole thing or, right. you know, most of it. I got a really good sense of 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 how it worked and, and how to navigate around. And I went, hey, you know, they had a pretty good article about Cora and I got a lot out of it. There was an article about Natalie Portman's pregnancy that that you I, got a lot out of. Yeah. I am somewhat interested in that. I'll admit it, but right. it's not for everybody. Right. So that's is that a fully interactive one with videos, like in her uh, in her hospital room? For, and, yes, yeah, yeah okay. a lot of uh, uh, the the new crib. No, not really. <laughs> uh, but but you know it, you know the content itself is like you'll have to choose for yourself if it's the sort of thing you want to read. But you know the the way that the app is built is is more of interest to me because I read the article and then I said, well, wait a second. If this is it, then this is so outdated already. I mean, this is the morning's news, which is like yesterday's news in the world right. of the web. And then it was, no, actually, uh, the Daily will update behind the scenes. But so they anytime don't have you a good way later, of letting you know what's you, updated. You have or, no idea what's changed. In right. fact, when I launched it later in the evening, indeed, it updated. It told me it was updated. I right. went back to the table of contents. They should be... They should be I don't know, have arrows or, or highlight. They'll or have to do something like that. Something I mean, like that yeah. because it, I'm not going to read the whole thing again wondering what changed. Right. Oh, that's a different sentence or right. that typo is fixed. As far as the, the app itself, it looks great. I feel as though the price is very fair. Yeah, it's a good price, I think. You, you know, like the, a lot of these magazine apps have come out and even some of like the Wall Street Journal has been trying to sell subscriptions for their iPad app, you know, beforehand through their own website, so without any of the iTunes mechanism. But it's like the pricing on those things is still pretty outrageous when you can get stuff on the web for free. This is a little bit better, but the problem is, of course, still it doesn't be free. You know, 99 cents a week is still 99 cents a week. It's fair, it seems like, but it's not free. It's not free, and I, and I feel like for breaking news, maybe not for a lot of other kinds of news, but for breaking news, I'm not going to go to the daily, at least not yet, because I don't trust that it's up to the minute. Yeah. You know, on TechCrunch, you know, if something changes, you just right. change it right then and it's done. Yeah. It's changed. But, you know, Real maybe time. maybe this model, you know, maybe this is the very first, you know, step in a direction that does eventually take on, like, new life with the fact that there's, there's subscriptions now going to be built into iTunes. And so 
any publisher can easily make an app that has a subscription layer to it. Right. And, you know, you, you obviously have to add value to it. You have to add some kind of content that you can't get on the web. You know, and so maybe the larger ramification of all of this to me is that the fact that these subscriptions will now be built into iTunes really easily for anyone to use. And, you know, it's more than just, you know, what this is right now. We'll see. Maybe it won't catch on at all, but maybe it will. Right. A nice uh, couple of, in the settings area, just uh, little touches that the dailies put together. They'll let you add your location, so it tells me what the weather is. Yeah. You know, if you're a horoscope person, it'll give you uh, a horoscope that, that matches what you'd be interested in. And if you're interested in maybe just looking at all the daily videos, they've got nice little links to video and audio content you can scrub through and you can and also they do shuffle have one stories. of those videos isn't it a i haven't really watched it yet but i think it's like an overview video of it's like what's going on today yeah a, a last note about the daily because yeah, again people read newspapers based on what they're interested in i'm i'm the, the daily's shuffling stories for me right now if i if i don't know what i want to read about it'll it'll decide for me it's kind of nice uh, there is uh, an article that was buried in the opinion area of the, of the inaugural issue yesterday that had some, I wouldn't say, uh, I don't know if I'd say political undertones, but a little bit of a slice of what you might expect the slant to be of the daily. From News Corp's perspective? From News, yeah. yeah. And so it's, I think it's, you know, there's three outcomes of that. Either you agree with with their stance and you go, cool, this seems like the paper for me. You don't agree and it turns you off or you agree, but you still don't think that that should be part of the experience. Right. So they're, you know, that's what's, again, what's a kind fine of cool line to watch. is that um, not only can you leave comments, you know, on it, you could leave an audio comment. There's a really simple button to leave an audio comment for someone. Why? Well, it's like if someone is really, you know, mad about a certain opinion piece, can you, yeah, can you imagine some of those audio comments? That would be crazy. As somebody who receives a lot of comments, some of them negative on, on many of the posts that you write, I mean, commenting is a big right. part of right. a, a blog, right? Uh, on some blogs more than others. Imagine if you were actually <laughs> listening to these people ones? ranting and raving for, I mean, is there, a, is there a limit? I mean, people can go on a long time if they're really upset. Yeah, they can be fun. That would be s sort of fun. Really? For a while, you know, there were video comments. Remember Seismic was trying to do that for a little yeah, bit of time, you know? Yeah. I think people, it's a barrier to entry, of course, and people are less comfortable saying, you know, the meanest things, you know, if, if it's either their voice or themselves on video. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't it's know. An it's, kind of it's an interesting experiment I don't think it has legs, audio comments. I mean, I, I know because so many, I ask all of you to send in uh, Google Voice comments, uh, which is 757-504-IPAD, uh, if you don't know the number already. And many of the comments, for whatever reason, yeah, I, can't, I can barely hear them. Maybe they're driving. There are all sorts of ways that audio can be screwed Maybe up. Maybe they're just drunk. Maybe they're drunk or right. they just don't make sense. Right. Eh. So... I don't know. I, I, I feel like they're going to get rid of that eventually. Or somebody's going to say something terrible. And yeah, and then it leads to a police investigation, yeah, as said on the Daily. Because you can tell who it was, or right. I don't know. Someone was caught murdering someone in the background of the Daily comments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, or that. Right. Exactly. You, yeah, you can't really read that in a comment <laughs> that's just written out. Uh, so that's the Daily. Again, it's free right now. I, I recommend checking it out. Free uh, for two weeks or something like free that, Free for right? two weeks. For I, I think it's through the 13th. Yeah. Uh, courtesy of Verizon. Um, that's good. That's a good idea. Probably for a reason. Yeah. And uh, if not, if the Daily isn't your uh, the the newspaper you've always been been hoping for, it at least gives us a glimpse into how things are going to develop right. for other companies. Um, speaking of the Daily conference, there was a really ridiculous story you wrote about it a, a <laughs> right. lot of people wrote about well, it well yeah because it was a, it originated from a Reuters story that claimed that somebody nobody knows who saw an iPad 2 in the crowd at the daily well launch. we do know who it was a Reuters eyewitness a uh, Reuters eyewitness they're either an eyewitness owned by Reuters they're it's one of the writers of the story who you know thought that they could be sneaky and not people wouldn't look at their name is in the it, title is it a, like a little shih tzu puppy or yeah, i mean doesn't be, even say it's a anyone. human eyewitness um to be fair to them so basically they're they're saying that an eyewitness saw the ipad 2 at this event yeah. at the daily launch they event. claim that somebody told them that there that was, it was somebody there. else someone that someone was had sitting an iPad there with him mm -hmm. and to be fair i have no idea if that's true or not and you know no one really does it seems like no one else has come out of the woodwork to confirm this or deny it but there's a few things that are odd about this, aside from the fact that it's, you know, this Reuters eyewitness. The second thing is, like, okay, so they mentioned that it has a camera on the top. 
You know, mm-hmm. that's like the most obvious thing in the world. Yeah, anyone everyone's who's, expecting that. Anyone who's read any Apple rumor over the past six months will know to say that. I mean, so, uh, also, you know, the fact that, well, where's the picture of it? Everyone has a camera phone. Why don't you just grab a picture of it to prove it? You know, it's like this this report that's three sentences of meat talking about we saw it with the, uh, the, the camera on top. And then it says we've talked to sources who say confirm that it will also uh this is the new ipad that it will have a camera on the top it's like who are these sources like of course you know you could talk to anyone on the street who will know that it's also and i'm not saying that anyone's lying here i mean you you want to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're not or at least they thought that right. they saw what they thought they saw right but, of course but uh but it's also it's unconfirmable therefore anyone could <laughs> right. say that it's like guess who saw the ipad 2 first we did right we have an eyewitness. You know, I could say that. I saw the iPad too, you guys. I, I just the, didn't get a picture. I'm iPhone sorry. seven. I've seen. Uh, <laughs> I've seen everything. I've seen an alien today. He was at the. He was actually at the daily launch. It was very weird. But <laughs> yeah, I didn't I get saw a picture. It. Actually, an eyewitness that belongs to me saw it. So it was very. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I. I. I was just poking fun at them. You know, maybe they did see it. Who knows? It's a little weird that at an, an Apple controlled event that they would allow someone with an iPad two to show up there. It's. It's. It's so doubtful. It's probably a old journalist. Like it's probably somebody who s- thought they saw something. You know, it could have been a Zoom, one of the new Android tablets. It could have been, a, you know, you know, many things. At Macworld last week, there are plenty of cases yeah. that they've sort of decided. We're pretty sure that the iPad Two is right, going to look right. like it this. We've already made things. something with a camera. Could have been roll. a Chinese knockoff. Could have been anything in could the world. Could have been anything. Right. It it seems a little irresponsible to write a story that cannot be backed up with any proof at all. Just take a camera phone picture. Everyone has one. I mean, I don't Pretty much, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, unless you're a Reuters eyewitness, apparently. Right. Um, another event. Yesterday was a big day for events. Um, we had the daily event uh, that I paid a lot of attention to, but uh, another event that you covered for TechCrunch, uh, as did everyone in the world, was uh, this big uh, new Android Honeycomb event. Yes. So I didn't go to it. Uh, another one of our writers, Jason, went to it um, and actually got a chance to play. He got some hands-on time with the new Zoom, the Motorola Zoom tablet, which is the the first product that will be running Android 3.0. And we Honeycomb. all saw it at CES, but it was just a, vi- a demo video. It wasn't right. actually... Right, this is hands-on time that yeah. he got. He got to play with it, I think, for about 20 minutes. And, you know, he had a, he has a good review on it that's on TechCrunch right now. It's it's pretty long, um, and he goes in-depth about all the different interactions and everything. His overall view of it seemed to be that it was very good, and it's finally something, an Android tab, that, that can compete with the I- iPad. Right. And others have said this, too, who got to play with it. The problem, of course, is that this is a product that's coming out that's not out yet and, you know, might be out at the end of this month. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think they've formally announced that yet. But it's a product coming out, let's say, at the end of this month that will be able to compete with the iPad, which, of course, is now just about a year old. And they're about to launch the iPad, too. So, you know, they're a year behind. It's a step behind. And and a lot of people are also saying, and Jason, you know, acknowledges there are still several things about the device that are simply not as good as the iPad. So we're a year behind we're on the verge of iPad 2, and we're just now getting an Android tablet product that's almost as good as the original year-old iPad. Yeah, the it's interesting because, I mean, the reason that we're talking about this, people go, well, what, what do we care about other tablets, is that this is really the first Android operating system that was even designed to be run in a tablet. Right, Honeycomb. So, yeah, Honeycomb. So this is, you know, it's interesting to, to see how... Uh, actual, not just Android, but other tablets will be able to compete with iPad. I mean, everyone has said, oh, iPad's so much better than everything else. Oh, they, they have 95% of the market. I mean, that was right. all anyone talked about last year because there just wasn't any competition. There wasn't anything well, that, they that had, you could even compare it to. They had some of, you know, some of these other smaller Android tablets. Like, people like the 7-inch uh, form factor, but it's like, you know, there were those reports more recently that some people have been returning them and stuff. It's just, the Android well, itself was not geared for... Sure. Uh, Galaxy Tab originally right. said we sold 1 million unit or 2 million units, but then it was, well, we shipped. We shipped, right. And we, we didn't sell as many as that, even though we're still very pleased with our progress. So this is this is finally, uh, you know, it's like the Android smartphones. Right. There are really great competitors to the iPhone, depending yeah. on what you're looking for and what you're comfortable with and the operating system of your choice. So Honeycomb is almost here, and we'll just have to see. They'll have a tricky time, though, because it looks as if, you know, iPad 2 will not only be, you know, they'll have the Wi-Fi version, and then, of course, they'll have the 3G version. Mm-hmm. The last one had the 3G version with AT&T only, but now with the Verizon partnership, it looks like there will probably be an iPad with Verizon, too. So it'll be on the 
two big carriers in the United States, or you can get the Wi-Fi version, and it'll be pretty hard to compete with that. Well, we will be watching it closely on iPad today to see who our competitors are. Right. Barking at our feet. Zoom today. Zoom today. That Honeycomb. Will, Apple. Right. All these these names. Aren't they fun? I uh, want to thank Slingbox really quickly for sponsoring this, uh, this episode of iPad Today. We love Slingbox, not only because it allows you to watch TV wherever you are, not just in your living room or your bedroom or your roof. Or, you, can, you can watch TV anywhere if you've got a Slingbox. But you can also watch on your iPad now. That was their latest edition just a couple months ago, Slingbox, introduced their iPad app, which is great. So imagine this. Let's say it's Super Bowl Sunday. And, oh, great. You've got to go on some work trip last minute to BFE. I don't know. Actually, that's kind of a bad term to use these days. Uh, you're, you're, yes. you're nowhere near uh, where your normal television uh, li living room setup would be. If you've got a Slingbox connected to your iPad, you can watch the channel of your choice from your Slingbox app. And you say, well, how, does that, how is that possible? What you do is you, uh, it's available at Best Buy and Amazon. You buy your Slingbox, you connect it to uh, your cable, your DVR. It'll work with, with uh, recorded shows as well as anything that's, that's live. And once you're out and about and you think, oh gosh, I'm missing my show. And it, you know, it's the show that I want to be watching right now. I'm on the beach in Hawaii. I hate it. I want to be at home watching my favorite show because that's what I do on Wednesday afternoons. That's okay. You just fire up your sling box and you watch your TV. It's as if you've taken your entire entertainment system with you. People have been and using gone it for, you for demos all the time. They bring it in and they put it on the iPad and they're showing their live TV thing. It's sling simple. box is awesome. Leo's always uh, threatening to uh, bring his iPad to uh, you know, the Giants game, he gets Giants tickets to to watch replays, yeah. stuff that you can't get when you're in the live setting. And I go, you're not gonna do that when you're live at a baseball game. He goes, no, I do. You know, he's he's one of those people that listens to the radio announcers because he likes them better. So this is as if you could be at a game, sporting events, just one example. You could be at a game, but then watch the television version of the game, which of course is a very different experience. So Slingbox has a lot of great uses. We love them. We are so happy that they uh, sponsored iPad today because with the iPad app, it's just the perfect fit. If you want to know more about it, go to slingbox.com slash twit. And we thank them for their support. Uh, you, MG, you over there. Yes. Uh, we're lucky enough to be able to test out the Verizon iPhone. Yes. Before I, almost anybody, you I were have one it of right here. you were one of a select few. How does how does how does one become a uh, an elite Verizon iPhone tester? Um, you sell your soul to Apple. I think. Is that what yeah, you've I done? I know a lot of people do. have accused you of doing right, that, but are you confirming that's what the it here? Say. Yes. Yes. Okay. Totally. So you've been. Uh, what's interesting about this is that let's say that I. Uh, didn't have, this is a 3G enabled iPad, but right. let's say I had Wi-Fi only. So I'm actually what doing that do right now. On my, I have a Wi-Fi only iPad right here, and it is hooked up to the uh, the Verizon iPhone because there's the personal hotspot feature. Okay. Now, I haven't actually walked through it, but I have right. heard it's not that hard. So let's yeah. say so the Super the whole simple. idea, you know, anyone who hasn't set up a hotspot before is you're somewhere. Let's say you're in a cafe. You love the cafe. Everything's great about it, but they don't right. have Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi is down. Right. And you need to get online. What are you going to do? All you do is go into the settings and go to the personal hotspot thing, which is one of the, the main settings mm -hmm. now. And you just flick it and you can flick it on. And then it will tell you it uses the name of your phone as your Wi-Fi uh, hub name. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you a password, a generic password that you can change to anything you want. But and so then you just connect to it and you're good to go. And it will show you in the background there will be a, a little um, blue light that goes over, kind of like when you're on a call, you know, you have the uh, the green one and then I think there's a red one, like if you're on Skype or something. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a little blue thing over the top saying that, that a device is connected and it'll even tell you how many devices are connected. You can have up to five connected to this. So uh, in your tests mm -hmm. of of the, the, uh, the hotspot capability on the Verizon iPhone, I know you went out into... Again, places that don't have Wi-Fi, just to see how it works. Right. Realistically, how well does this hotspot work, especially if you're going to connect five devices? It's, Everyone, all of your friends are sitting sure. around. Sure, I mean, it might be a little bit slow for five devices if you're trying to do something, you know, watch video or anything like that. But for, certainly it's great for one device, and I've used it for two devices. It's very good. I mean, if I have, you know, a MacBook and then I have an iPad that I need to connect to it, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's great. It's great for that. So And it works. It, it, one of the best parts about it is that it actually works It'll do from, you know, 100% charge down to zero. And in, in the time that I've tested it, it's been uh, about four hours of, uh, of 
Wi-Fi battery life you get from it. You see, Verizon 3G. That's weird. It's weird looking. For some reason at home, I've just never thought to do this. It's cool. Look I mean, it, yeah. it, it looks exactly the same. I know I know the, the, um, the form factor is slightly different. Yeah, I but, mean, it has two little rivets up here instead of up top. And which stuff. is supposed to help with the antenna well, gate they issue. they won't say that, but yes. Well, it's assumed. Right. Yes. I mean, why else change yes. something that otherwise no, looks very nice? There is absolutely no antenna issue anymore. There's no antenna issue. One this thing one thing that is important to note, and, you know, I did it in the review, and all the other reviewers have basically said the same thing. The Verizon network is definitely slower than AT&T's network when you can connect to it, uh, of course. Okay. So... You know, it's noticeably slower, uh, especially for uploads, um, you know, and that may or may not matter to some people. So, you know, but it's at the same time, the coverage is so much greater for Verizon itself. So, you know, it's a trade off. It's a trade off. You get faster service with AT&T, a lot of dropped calls. Right. A lot of dropped calls. And often no, I mean, no bars at all. There's no question in my mind that it's worth it for me. Like someone who lives in San Francisco, someone who spends a lot of time in the Soma district mm -hmm. um, where it's awful. Which is notorious for bad coverage. You know, we have uh, one of uh, one of our Twit hosts, Brian Brushwood, he lives in Austin. Mm -hmm. And he's always, you know, he just, I mean, unless it's South by Southwest time where the right, iPhone people the worst take thing down ever. the network. Yeah. There are issues that some cities have that just aren't yeah. true. It for seems all to be cities. in many, you know, major metropolitan areas: New York, San Francisco, or know. at least metropolitan areas where a lot of folks are using iPhone. iPhones yeah. that you know that are disproportionate to. Maybe and that's other you know that's one of the things that a lot of people bring up is now the fact that you know so it comes out it's actually out today for early for Verizon customers I think they're shipping them already mm -hmm. um it'll so be out a week from today for everyone else who wants to you know sign up new or jump over from AT and T the question of course is will it bring down Verizon's network the same way that you know the iPhone brought down AT and T's network I have to believe that that's not going to be the case first of all. There's so many Android devices already on Verizon's network that, like, you know, there's millions out there. This network has been tested for devices like this that are, you know, huge into using data. So, uh, and they, they've said that they're ready for it. So, you know, that will be put to the test very shortly, but I think it's good. Right, yeah. Uh, well, uh, it remains to be seen. I'm not switching just yet. I may. It's it's not something. It, I'm not going to rush out next Thursday and go get my new Verizon in the terms iPhone. Of, you know, in terms of iPad, though, it is a great scenario if you're going to, you know, definitely get the Verizon iPhone. And, of course, there's talk already that the AT&T iPhone will have the hotspot feature eventually. Sure. They have to have, do a software update, of course, to do it. But either, so either one of those, it's a great idea if you just want to buy them the Wi-Fi Absolutely. iPad, which is cheaper and also doesn't require a monthly fee, and you just use this because it's $20 extra a month. And unless I'm at the gym and I'm, I know I'm going to read something like the daily on my iPad, right. I've always got my iPad and my iPhone on me. If I've got my iPad with me, I also right. have my phone. Right. So you don't really need 3G on both yeah. if, if, you can, if you can tether uh, and uh, use a hotspot capability. So Definitely. pretty cool. Yeah. Um, new in the app store this week. I just, I always comb the app store just to see what's new and cool and make sure we don't miss anything interesting. And they got a lot of new stuff this week, but one of, one of the, uh, the featured apps that I hadn't heard of before is called Trickle. So I'll just show you what it is. Uh, the jury is sort of out, uh, whether I think it's awesome. Oh, Hey, there's a tweet from you. The name's <laughs> iPhone, Verizon iPhone. Well, this I love it. This is the best app ever. <laughs> oh my God. It's perfect. So what the, what, what this is, is it's using a, is this, is this like, uh, bold Helvetica here. That's yes. what it looks like. Yes. Okay, so it's using basically a very hipster, uh, uh, happy, friendly uh, font to just display tweets. Yeah. That's all it's doing. Automatically rotates through. These are people that I'm following. Right. When I first downloaded uh, um, Trickle, I put in my Twitter credentials, and so it knows who I'm following, and that's all it's doing. What I can do is, you know, if you, I could retweet this tweet from my friend Cap if I wanted to. I could favorite this tweet from McSweeney's if I wanted to. What they have already fixed a bit uh, from some of the early reviews complained that because people are always linking to Right, to that you things. couldn't open a link. Yeah, that you couldn't night. open a link. You can. It's still going to dump you onto Safari. Yeah. They which, should have a built-in browser just that pops up really quickly. They should. And, and I assume that they probably, this seems like one of those apps, by the way, this is free, as it should be, seems like one of these apps that was sort of a lark. Yeah. And a lot of people like it, but complain that it's not that useful. And so they go, oh, well, okay, now we got to figure out some It's kind of kinda cool for people who you, what picture are you looking at? There? Oh, it's my friend Casey. She's really pretty. Um, so there are, um, you know, there's people who actually use the, the picture frame uh, feature of the iPad itself. You know, so when they're not using it, they kind of use it as a picture frame. You know, they right. have that easy button you tap. 
this is kind of interesting. It's like a little display that you put around your house or whatever. You know, when you're not using the iPad or it's charging, you just put this up there and you can watch tweets go by. For a lot of folks, when I'm at my home setup, I've always got my iPad there. But if I'm right. maybe writing something or for right, whatever right. reason I'm using yeah. my laptop exclusively, it's kind of running in the background and it's not a tab that I'm switching back in between. Right. Realistically, I think this would be horrible for productivity unless you're just one of those people who can look up every once in a while and just go, yeah. <laughs> cool tweet and then go back to what you're doing. Right. I don't know if I could do that, especially since at least the habits of my friends is to tweet a lot of links, right. which would have me going back and, and forth from Safari it, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's worth noting uh, in the info area, if you go, ah, well, yeah, I mean, is this really it? Is there anything you can do? You can add search. You can also um, in the advanced area, you can uh, change your tweet speed so it could go really fast. So you fast. could have gotten like real time updates for the Egypt stuff going on if you did if you followed yes, the, the exactly. Egypt hashtag. Could, and, that could yeah. that could be really if, you know if you were working on a story about something and yeah. you just didn't want to miss anything and you kind of wanted to be able to glance up at it but still stay focused on whatever you were doing. Right. Uh, there's refresh time and and again if you maybe you wanted to change once a minute otherwise it's just too much. So you've got some options there but from most of it is just... They really need an option to have uh, Comic Sans. Way. I mean, how do they not have Comic Sans? Uh, come on, really? That would be awesome. Yeah. I would it, use that. Though. It's funny, the, the things that people complain about, it's like, well, I don't like that font. Well, I don't like the color of that font. Right. It's not that customizable. Maybe it will be uh, if they cave to, uh, to, to the public's demands. I don't think it was ever meant to be no. <laughs> dissected so much. No. I like it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a fun little. I, I always try out every Twitter app. This isn't so much a Twitter app as just a Twitter photo frame. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's nice. cool. Yeah. yeah, it's new in the App Store. If you're interested in it, go get it. It's there right now. It's on the. Uh, it's featured. Want to uh, quickly talk about a couple of our iPad stars of the week. Sometimes they're humans and sometimes they're not. Uh, our first iPad star of the week is Freddie the Wonder Pug. He lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He is. He doesn't get a lot done, Freddie, but he has a, he has a good time uh, not doing it. Uh, this is sort of a twofer because we're also showing off Freddie's human. Uh, his name is Doc. Hi, Doc. He's also I Doctor B on Twitter. Uh, his home screen, because uh, MG, you may not be familiar with uh, Leo and what Leo and I do each week is try to feature a couple folks' home screens so we get an idea of how people organize things right, right. and what they like ha to have prominently on their home screen. It looks like. Looks like Doc and Freddy uh, keep it pretty minimal down yep. in the bottom dock. Uh, in fact, they don't really look like they have any apps at all. Well, what's <laughs> that? There's a red one there. Is that a to-do? Is it to-do or something? I don't know what that one is. Yeah. Uh, the picture doesn't really show. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm focused on, on Freddy's fingernails. He needs a manicure, man. Looks like they've got keynote and pages, the biggies. Right. Although it does look like, to be fair, it looks like they're on page two of three. So maybe page one oh. and three are full of apps. No, no, no. They're on page one. The other one's search. Oh. Yeah. Maybe page two is full of apps. Maybe it is. In folders. Many, many folders. <laughs> Hard to say. We'll never know. But Freddie, thanks for watching the show. I like your stomach. Uh, our next iPad star of the week is Gidget the Jack Russell Terrier. Uh, Gidget uh, wrote in, uh, actually Gidget's human Craig wrote in because Gidget <laughs> doesn't actually know how to type. Uh, to say, uh, down with cats. Dogs are cool. I agree. Well, I don't agree, but I think dogs <laughs> are cool. And Gidget's really cute. And Gidget actually is he showing... Eating that iPad? Showing, Gidget's sort of eating it. He's showing off his home screen as well. We've got Goodreader, uh, again, with the keynote and the pages. iSuite, very popular with folks. It's funny. Everyone complains that it, they're very expensive, but a lot of people like them. The calculator, I use that one. That's Do you? One. Yeah. I've actually never used my calculator on my iPad. Isn't that weird? It just hasn't come up yet. Um, it looks Webex. like, is that Bump? No, it's not Bump. Webex. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, Webex. so there's a bit of sharing going on here. Good stuff. Thanks, Gidget. You're the best. Ooh, you know what? Another uh, another thing I noticed. Uh, do you have the Bump app installed? Leo and I talked about it a I long do time on my ago. iPhone, not on my iPad. Bump it was great. I originally showed it off. It's a free app. It's awesome. Just called Bump in the App Store, where if you wanted to... Um, Let's say I had a picture on my phone, right? Because mm -hmm. at least right now, the first generation iPad doesn't have a camera. I could bump it. If I had the bump app installed on my phone and my iPad, I could bump pictures to my iPad and then it could be in my photo album on the iPad. You can bump apps to each other. Yeah. So if you're, you're 
you've got your iPad and I've got mine and I bump it to you. It's not actually going just going to install the right, app because right, there's right. iTunes it'll tell issues. You what the it'll, app is it'll bump the download, download link right. for you then to download it and you yeah. can pay if you want. I didn't want even think about that for the iPad. But yeah, yeah it's not idea. a bad idea. Yeah. It's yeah, you know, can, can be convenient. It uh it saves you the step of doing a little iTunes search, I suppose. Uh, so thanks. Those are the iPad stars of the week. Sorry, humans. We'll get to you next week. There's just too many of you. So many people in the world. Um, but we do like you. I mean, that's why we do the show. Uh, we actually have a question. A couple questions, actually. This one's from Andrew in Pittsburgh. His first question is, can you please offer some advice regarding ways to organize and categorize apps, specifically by types of games, first-person shooters, strategy, etc.? Well, Andrew, I assume that you may not know how to categorize apps within folders uh, on your iPad because that's the most obvious way to right. categorize pretty, things. I mean, you could do it, I guess, by screen if you wanted to, you know, put You like, can categorize by screen, but I think what you're asking is something that uh, many people may not know you can do. So you're talking about gaming. I'll just do this with two of my texting apps. If, I'm, if I go ahead and, and click and hold and drag one of my apps onto another app. At this point, I've now created a folder and I can call that folder whatever I want. The iPad, uh, because I used uh, two uh, messaging apps, it tries to guess based on the keywords that the app developer um, added into the store, to the app store. It tries to guess what said productivity, but let's say I just wanted to call it gaming. Let's say they were two gaming apps. There you go. Now I've got a gaming folder and I can put, oh, I think up to nine um, what is it? Or is it 12 on the it iPad? Maybe 12, yeah. yeah it's I think less it, on the iPhone. Yeah, because of the screen um, real estate. Yeah, but it sounds like he's also maybe asking also, like, what's a good way to organize them in between, like, games themselves, like first-person shooter strategy games. It's like, it sounds like he already has that figured out. I mean, what's better than that? You know, like, right. first-person shooters. That's a good folder right there. It's also kind of, I mean... What, what Whatever strategy game is to you, put it in your strategy I game I tend folder. to do, like, for the games ones, I have, like, games one, games two, games three, which is probably the worst way in the totally, world to organize Totally, because how do you remember what's in I don't know what's two. in there. Yeah, I kind of have to look at the very little thumbnail and figure out what's what's actually going on in there. That's actually why I don't use folders more. This is a much better idea. First-person shooters and strategy games well, and simulations. Well, there you go. You should be thanking Andrew from Pittsburgh. Yes. Uh, thanks, Andrew. His second question is, what's your opinion regarding the evolution of gaming in general on touchscreen? devices. I seem to recall proposed designs for controller type accessories, but I haven't seen any for sale. I'm not saying I want one. I just want to know if there's an option. Uh, and then he says, keep up the great work. So thanks for that. You know, in our Macworld episode, which was just last week, so that's episode 30, we showed off something called uh, Flick from a company called 10 One Design. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this little apparatus? Mm -hmm. It's great. It's uh, if you can you for folks that are listening, go to Ten One Design because they've they've got a great sort of like video and audio tutorials. It's these little suction cup type yeah, that things is a good idea, that yeah. you add over where the virtual and that manipulates the touch screen itself. They like exactly. rub up against it. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's like this tactile. Um, uh, controller. It, it's like an it's old almost school like an controller. emulator. Yeah, yeah, and it um, Leo. I'm not a very good gamer, and the particular game that we were playing at Macworld was, it was sort of like a modern Asteroids game, which I was just very confuddled by. He was pretty good. And the controllers worked really well. I mean, they were definitely better than just having, there's something to be said about something that your thumb can right. actually feel and right. touch and has a little resistance. There's springs involved, and they're really, I mean, you just, they pop right on and off. I mean, it's not anything that... And you pop it off, you clean your iPad, it's like it was never there. You don't have to install anything. They're literally just suction cups. And I think they sell them um, one for 20 and two for 30. So if it's if you play a lot of games and this seems like something uh, that would work for a lot of your games, it's a really good option. I'm sure there'll be there'll be more, but that's, that's the most uh, obvious solution um, that I saw. Before we get to our app caps, just want to remind you uh, to write us at iPadToday at twit.tv. We give you a lot of ways to get a hold of us. You can leave us a voicemail. That number again is 757-504-IPAD. Or for extra points, send us a video. Every once in a while, we feature one of your awesome videos. We can see you and you can see yourself later. And it's a lot of fun. Um, just upload the video and then send us a link because we don't like to open attachments. Uh, MG, I know you've got your app cap, so go ahead and get your app cap on. And while okay. you're making sure that it looks really good, just want to take the opportunity to thank Gazelle for sponsoring this edition of iPad Today. Gazelle is, let me tell you a little bit about Gazelle if you've never heard about it because it is sweet. Let's say that you're like MG, uh, who has a drawer full of old iPods and first-gen iPhones and 
weird blackberries and maybe a laptop or two that <laughs> or are not being used or four that right. are just not being used. They're maybe you're holding them for sentimental value. Maybe you're not. But at some point you think there's nothing I'm going to do with this. Why do I have it? Could I get some money for it? And you don't want to go through the eBay rigmarole because sometimes that can be a pain in the rear. Gazelle is your solution. All you do is you go to gazelle.com and it gives you a, a, an opportunity to enter in and say it's the first gen iPhone. So you write that in and it'll, it'll say, you know, what, what's, the, what's the general um, condition? You know, is it banged up? Is it still in the box? Whatever. You, and you answer a few questions. Is there water damage? Things like that. And Gazelle will say, okay, we'll give you a uh, hundred bucks for the iPhone. Great. Awesome. That's wonderful. They'll even send you a box to your house. They will basically, they, you almost have to do nothing at all. You, you can, you, the packaging will come straight to your house. You put all, everything that you want to send over to Gazelle to get out of your way, to get some money for. You go to your nearest UPS store, you send it off, and Gazelle will send you a check. What are you doing? Are you taking a picture of me? Yep. Very good. We'll send you a check for the money that it's paying you for the stuff that you don't use, that's of no use to you anymore. If you're not using your old BlackBerry, wouldn't you rather have cash? I would. Uh, Gazelle can, um, you know, they can send it to a PayPal account or send you a check, a variety of things. So it's great. Um, you know, by the way, this doesn't just apply to phones. You know, it could be like an old Xbox or, you know, a video game. They really, they really cover a lot of stuff. And by the way, let's say that, that it's something that maybe it's very damaged and it's unusable or for whatever reason, you're not going to get any money for it. But it's something that you can't just toss in the trash because then it's going to go in the landfill and... Um, Poisonous stuff is going to seep out of the battery and it's going to ruin everybody. Yeah, you don't want to do that. If you send it to Gazelle, they will responsibly recycle it and you don't have to worry about doing the wrong thing or worry about how to do the right thing. Gazelle will do everything for you. We love them. And by the way, a special offer code, iPad, I-P-A-D, that's your offer code. If you go to gazelle.com and enter the offer code iPad when you're signing out, you get an extra 5% off of the total of uh, everything that you're going to get back anyway. So Gazelle... As Leo says, don't just sell it, gazelle it. I don't do it in the same voice that he does because it's so nerdy, but it is a kind of a good little slogan. I think he made that up. And it is a, it's a great service. It's a great service. You just, you really I did just, just use it. I just used it for the first time. I had no idea. What's, yeah, I know. I told him, well, yeah. have you tried gazelle? And he says, what's gazelle? And I said, you don't watch my show. You well, do not watch my show. Busted. Well, I used it. Uh, how much money are you expecting for uh, all the stuff that you entered? You know, so for, to try it out, I only, um, I turned in, I think, one old laptop. Actually, my MacBook Pro, which, you know, I made a big thing about how I love the MacBook Air so much that I just don't use the MacBook Pro anymore. So I had a relatively new MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. and I turned it in. Um, you know, I think they're they're still looking it over now. I, I get, they gave me an estimate or whatever. I think I'm going to get, like, 1600 or that's back, I mean, I that's... Something like that? You, again, to be fair, you did have a lot of stuff laying around. So it's, right. you know, maybe a bigger bulk of items than, than the average person. But can you imagine? Accumulate some stuff. You got $1,500 to play and with. And the best part is you don't Valentine have to do anything. weekend or something like that. Or just is that, a weekend is with the coming, buddies. Is that coming up? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I know. Drinking. Not that I care. Right. Anything like that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, Gazelle, we love you guys. Thanks so much. And we appreciate your support. All right, put on your cap. You haven't done that yet. Oh. Don't think I haven't noticed. Right. Before the show, I said to MG, you know you have to wear a hat for the AppCap Awards. And he said, I really don't want to. And I said, well, that's a, uh, it's not really up to you. Yeah. This is a great hat for you. You look awesome. <laughs> um, you do. You, you look really good. You could uh, you could be a cop. You could be a... I could be a, a doorman. A doorman. <laughs> yeah, you'd be a very good doorman. Yeah. You're very polite. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is the part of the show where we talk about our favorite apps of the week. They're usually don't have anything to do with anything. We just have to like them and think that you might like them as well. And mine is particularly random this week because, as we all know, well, most of us anyway, the Oscars are coming up. MG and I go to movies all the time. We've actually seen every single Oscar contender for Best Picture. There's 10 now this year. So. Well, I haven't seen The Kids Are All Right, but you saw that. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, yeah you didn't see it. I don't yeah. know how much you'd like that. All right, so there's 10 this year. It's up from like five last year. The only one we haven't seen is Toy Story 3. No, they did 10 last year, but they, this, oh, they did? that was, that was, first that was year the first year. first year of the yeah. inaugural year of the, yeah. the Best Picture with yeah. every movie in the world. Anyway, we watch a lot of movies. Uh, so I've seen all of the contenders, but one of my favorites, not sure if it's going to win, but one of my favorites is... Uh, a little uh, Coen Brothers movie called True Grit. If you've seen it, you know it's great. It's a romantic you, comedy. Yeah, yeah, very, with a happy ending. Uh, if you haven't, then I won't give anything away by showing you this app. All right, so this is True Grit, and it's free. It better be, because it's uh, it's uh, made by Warner Brothers. 
uh, what this is, is it's, it's not only kind of cool because I liked the movie, but it's a very interesting foray by studios to get into the app market because what are they really going to give us, right? This is sort of interesting um, way to give you a behind-the-scenes look into the making of True Grit. Supposedly, pictures taken by Jeff Bridges himself. Jeff Bridges fans... Uh, stretch far and wide. Pretty much everybody's a Jeff Bridges fan. So this is just kind of a cool way to look at pictures that he took of the cast and crew. There's Haley. Taken with his iPhone? or I, just... I don't know what it was taken <laughs> with. Uh, probably not yeah. because they look rather panoramic. Well, I don't that's think him. he took that one. That's yeah. him. So, well, maybe it was on a tripod. You don't know. He's a very talented man. Uh, Matt took this of me, actually. You know, so there's some there's some information about. Nice job, Matt. He's uh, he's also works for Reuters, and he spots the iPad too. Yeah, he's the uh, the Reuters eyewitness. Yeah, he also worked on the the movie True Grit. There's Matt Damon. He looks very handsome. I'm a big Matt Damon fan, and so on and so forth. So you get the idea. This is, you know, you could say, oh, I don't. I mean. Is this the app for me? It's the app for you if you like this particular movie or if you're just one of those movie people, if you're one of those people who likes to look at behind-the-scenes stuff at the movie sites. It's just an app for them. It's kind of cool. I mean, I'm basically just scrolling through, looking at pages. I wonder if they released it specifically to try and, you know, garner support. I don't know if it came out just before or just after when the uh, award nominations, you know, were out. That's a good question. It is new yeah. in the App Store, but I'm not sure how new because sometimes the new stuff stays for but a couple of But it seems like weeks. that could be a good way for studios to do that. You know, they always, like, they take out full-page ads in Variety and, and, you know, the other trade publications to say, like, totally. you know, best movie of the year. It's blah, great. Blah. We got Matt Damon wearing his funny outfits and they I mean it's great I liked it they go a step further if there's a little there's a little ticket button in the upper right if you click that this is sort of where it gets weird because it's like well True Grit probably isn't even playing in some of the places that it was playing in right it's not why but it'll still be playing yeah it's, it's so nominated. the idea I think they're they're going with is they're testing this is a fun just kind of like test out thing it's we've got some pictures we've got nothing to do with them let's make an app and then let's build in some theater information. So you can watch the trailer here if you want to. Um, and you can see where, you know, again, I, I had added uh, location information. So it knows where I am. And so it's telling me theaters that are, you know, close to me geographically where I could watch the movie. And a little bit more information about the synopsis. Oh, it's Paramount, not Warner Brothers. And uh, it gives you a link to more information online. So it's fun. If you're a Jeff Bridges slash True Grit fan, it's free. You can look at some pictures. I like it, but I think it's um it's an interesting it's an interesting look into how studios are just getting their feet wet in the app world, especially with apps that don't do a lot but are good for the diehard fans. Yeah. So MG, uh, we've only got one more little area of the show, and that is your app cap. So I hope right. you're gonna impress us. Yes, I'm gonna wow everyone. Yes. Well, the thing is, the like you, on. you asked me to come up with one, and so I kept asking if you've already covered these, and you've covered pretty much yeah. every app. That the I app caps are tough. Regularly use. That's why I do app caps about. But True Grit, the movie. you don't use a lot of games, so I decided to. Pick well, I one certainly of those. don't. Uh, I'm not. I'm not much of a uh, a gamer in the sense of the game that you're about to show off. Right. Which is one of your favorites. Right. So SimCity Deluxe. SimCity Deluxe. This is a uh, a version, of course, of SimCity, which has been a franchise for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. um, you said you you played SimCity when I was like, around the clock. Yeah, when, when you I was were a younger. Kid. So this is that's why I love this app because it's just like what it was like when I was a little kid. This isn't like the original SimCity, which was you know basically laying down blocks and stuff. This is a little bit more like SimCity 2000 meets part of SimCity 3000, but that's great because SimCity 2000, I think, was my all-time favorite one. So um, I'll load up one of the uh, one of the games I had saved here. Um, so you load up a city just so we could see what it looks like when it's... Lemonity. Lemonity. Yeah, I don't know how I... Uh, I don't know where I came up with that one. <laughs> well, yeah. Lemon so the City. one, the one Very downside, good. which has always been a downside of like SimCity when it first came out for the iPhone too, has been that these things can take a long time to load because there's a lot going on in these cities and you can right. build these massive things. As we're seeing now, I mean, yeah, it's so loading, it takes, it's loading. It takes a little bit of time, but okay. So there it goes. So, um, you know, oh like, gosh, this is like Leo and We Rule all over again. Yeah, but it's different. It's much more, you know, uh, it's it's a different. It's game, for the more I discerning understand. person. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> So, you know, just like SimCity, if you've ever played it, uh, it's it, again, it's a lot like SimCity 2000 meets sort of SimCity 3000, and, you know, you can zoom all around. What's great is that, of course, it uses all the, the multi-touch gestures, so rather than having to double-click on a mouse or, mm. you know, hit, hitting the zoom buttons, you just do that. To build a road, you know, you do things like you just kind of drag on there, 
Yeah. And then you get that, and then you hit the little checkbox, and then it then it and it's built. And um, you know, you've got all your your standard tools that you're used to if you've played SimCity a lot. Um, you ha you have your advisors telling you what to uh, what to actually build. You have you know city ordinances that you can uh, enact or repeal. You have different graphs to show you how you're doing over time. You know, there's a lot of great stat stuff in here for people who are who are really into that kind of thing. It's a great game for folks who have a lot of time to yes. build cities and right. don't. That's mind pretty much what I do all day. <laughs> that's good to know. Yeah. Who don't mind checking in regularly to make sure that everything's running? It's just sort of well, thing. but that's it the thing. It's not like you you just pick it up and play it whenever you want. It's not running in the background oh, or see. anything like that. You don't need to keep Your checking crops in. Don't die. Yeah, my crops don't die. It oh, just is playing helpful. when I'm actually playing it. So this is okay. So. This is this is actually much better than a Wii rule. Yes, because right. you don't actually have to become this addict. Right, it's who not plays it every day. Right, it's not meant to be some kind of viral thing. It's more about city urban planning type thing, and that's you know that's what I thought thought it was always. It's, like, been cool it's about for it. all of us who took one um, course of architecture and yes. then didn't become architects, but still have a little love in our heart. Or for that those of are thing. us who love disasters and can just blow stuff up. Like uh, you know, you can do all kinds of things here. You can start a fire. You can start a tornado, and oh that's my gosh. that's so much fun. Yeah, that's oh, ooh, gosh, the laughs. Yeah, a devastating earthquake. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get ready for the big one that'll hit San Francisco one day. Right. Um. Cool. So SimCity. Uh, how much does this run us? Do we know? Hmm. That's a good question. Good I think. Good question. So they keep varying the prices. The problem. Um. EA is behind it, so mm -hmm. they do these sales. You know, every once in a while, where they bring it down to like four dollars. I want to say, if you want to look it up real fast, I think that it's ten dollars now, but it might be less. It might be Sim seven. City Deluxe on the iPad is dun 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 six ninety nine. Says iPad nerd in the chat so Seven dollars now. Yeah. So. Actually, Sim City Deluxe by EA in the App Store right now is telling me two ninety nine. Really? So perhaps it's like super on sale right now. Could be. Yeah, they change it all the time. So. They do. You know, it's sometimes it's tough. under ten dollars. It's tough. We get a lot of people who will complain. Hey, you said something was four ninety nine. It's not. There are a lot of specials that go on in the App Store because developers have all sorts of reasons they want to sell a bunch of stuff, or it's a pre-Christmas sale, or whatever. So or that could that could even be the iPhone version. I'm not sure. It could be the iPhone version. Yeah. Well, I put an iPad. Okay. But uh, but yeah. So sometimes the prices will get outdated here and there. We always give you what was up to date at the time of show. So don't shoot the messenger. See how I brought that back? Messenger apps are at the top of the show, and Messenger don't shoot, the don't messenger shoot us. Uh, anyway, that's it for this episode of iPad Today. MJ, did you enjoy it? I did. Can Even I though I made you wear now? a silly hat? Yes. It was fun. I really enjoyed it. Yes, Thanks it so much for being our very special co-host. MG Siegler from TechCrunch.com. If you don't read his work, he's a very talented dude. I recommend him highly. Leo says he's the best thing that ever happened to TechCrunch. I heard it myself. He said it on Sunday. Yes, when I was on the show. When you were on the show. <laughs> so he was buttering you up a little bit, right. but I think he really means it. Yeah. So Thank there you, you go. Uh, he's, he's a good dude. I like him. I think I'll keep him. Um, for now, remember, you can subscribe to the show. You can watch the show. You can watch old episodes and, and get all your information at twit.tv slash IPT. That's our, that's our mothership. That's where everything kind of happens. And never miss a show again because we don't want you to miss anything. And thanks again for giving me a heads up. And we've got uh, iTunes issues or anything doesn't look right, send an email. We will fix it. I promise. Or we'll do our best anyway. I'm Sarah Lane, and we'll see you next week on iPad Today. Ow! Just to howl. Ow! Ow. Very good. Okay. We'll work on that.